Hi, I'm Paul Ozolinski. I'm a children's book illustrator, and maybe you know some of my books. They include Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin, Toys Go Out, Z is for Moose, and The Wheels on the Bus, the book with pull tabs. I made the pictures for all those books, and some of them I wrote. I'm glad you're here for Little Squirrel Storytime, and I'm certainly glad to be here too. Do you know why it's called Little Squirrel Storytime? It's because of the little squirrels reading books in a tree in the big mural, the painting, in the children's gallery at the wonderful American Writers Museum, which I hope we can all go visit before too long. You probably saw that painting for a minute at the beginning of this video. Oh, and in case you're wondering who the artist was who made that picture, it was me. And I'm going to read to you a book that I wrote called The Lion and the Stoat. It's about two animal artists. Now, why would I want to write a story about artists? Hmm, that's a tough one. Maybe you can have an idea. Anyway, you might have guessed from the title that one of the artists in this book is a lion and the other is a stoat. What's a stoat? It's a kind of weasel. So it actually looks a little bit like a squirrel. What do you think? The Lion and the Stoat by me, Paul Ozolinski, with three short stories in it. And I will read them all to you, starting with one. Far away in a small country, there lived two artists. One of them was a stoat, the other a lion. They were both good painters, but the stoat was better, at least according to the stoat. And the lion thought, I can paint circles around that stoat. Here they are in the museum, checking out each other's paintings. So the lion challenged the stoat to a contest. Meet me in the market square at noon. Two weeks from today, he told the stoat, each of us will bring a painting and the public will be the judge. The stoat agreed. The lion went home and worked like an ox for the next two weeks. When he finished, he said, it's small, but it's perfect. The stoat put the last touches to his painting. That's it, he said. It couldn't be better. On the day of the contest, the whole town assembled at the marketplace. The two paintings were hung on a wall, each covered by a velvet curtain. I will show my painting first, said the lion and he drew back the curtain. The crowd began to clap. Suddenly, some sparrows flew down to the painting and began to peck at the grapes. I win, roared the lion. My painting looks so real, it has even fooled the birds. Can you top that stoat? Let's see what's behind that curtain of yours. The stoat cleared his throat. <clears throat> My dear lion, he said, there is no curtain. What you see is my painting of a velvet curtain. Your still life may have fooled the birds, but my painting has fooled you. The crowd cheered. The lion broke three paintbrushes over his knee as the stoat was declared the winner. Story two. Soon after, the stoat built himself a large shed on the outskirts of town. Come visit my new studio, he said to the lion. I am much too busy, the lion replied. He was still angry over the stoat's victory. But as the day went on, his curiosity grew. And first thing the next morning, he took a long walk right to the stoat's studio. The stoat was not at home. But the door was unlocked, and the lion walked in. There was little in the room but a table on which lay a palette, tubes of paint, and a can of brushes. Next to the table stood an easel holding a blank white canvas. This is private property, snapped a turtle who was sitting under the table. What are you doing here? Kindly remove yourself. The lion growled. Do you know who you are talking to? He picked up a brush, squeezed some paint on it, and said, tell your artist to look at this canvas. He will know who is here. Then he painted a very thin straight line across the exact middle of the canvas and left.
Soon the stoat came home. Thanks for keeping an eye on the place, he said to the turtle. Then he saw the canvas. What's this, he asked. Some fellow is here, said the turtle. He said you'd know who it was when you saw the canvas. Ah, yes, said the, said the stoat. And if I know him, he'll be back. Tell him when he comes that there's a message for him on the canvas. The stoat dipped a brush in a different color of paint and painted another, even thinner line over the one that the lion had made. It cut the first line right through the middle. Then he went out again. That very afternoon, the lion returned. There's a message for you on the canvas, said the turtle. The lion looked at the canvas. That's not bad, he said. However, and he painted a third line over the other two. It was so thin, it was almost invisible. It cut both the other lines straight through the middle. The lion returned to town smiling to himself. When the stoat came home, he went right to the canvas, looked at it, and whistled. <whistles> Nobody can split that line, he said. He hurried into town and found the lion in the cafe eating dinner. I give up, the stoat said. You've painted the finest line I have ever seen. Thank you, said the lion. I do believe it may be the finest line ever painted. Won't you join me for dinner? And the stoat did. Before dinner was over, they had decided to give the painting to the National Museum, where it hangs to this day. They called it the Three Lines, because unless you look carefully, you may think there's only one. Story three. The next year, the town hall, which was very old, collapsed. <coughs> a new one was quickly built. It had a big empty wall in the town council meeting room. We need a painting for this wall, the council decided when it met. A council board raised his wing. We have two fine painters in this town, the lion and the stoat, he said. Why don't we commission one of them to make a painting? Let the lion and the stoat each make a painting, the, the mayor suggested, something impressive. Then we can choose the better one. The council approved, and both artists agreed to the plan. The lion thought, I will surely win this one. All I need is the right subject. The lion had many ideas, but none of them seemed good enough. The stoat thought, Mine has got to be the best, but should, should he paint this or that? Nothing seemed quite right until the moment of inspiration. Aha, both of them. And both artists worked day and night for weeks. On the day the choice was to be made, a crowd gathered at the new town hall. The mayor stood at the top of the steps to greet the artists, and as the lion and stoat arrived with their paintings, a flock of sparrows flew over the crowd. Watch out of its grapes, one of them piped up. You'll hurt your beaks. The mayor uncovered the first painting. The crowd gasped. Oh, it was a picture of a lion. It was the lion himself. A perfect likeness, said the mayor, though not exactly what we had expected. Then she uncovered the stoat's painting. It was a picture of a stoat. It was the stoat himself. Another perfect likeness, said the mayor, though not exactly what we had expected. But both are fine paintings. Indeed, she said, I have never seen a better painting of a lion or a stoat. Two pictures of two great artists painted by two great artists. Let us hang both pictures, one next to the other. Yes, voted the council unanimously. The crowd clapped and cheered. Well, stoat, said the lion, are you satisfied? 
In fact, the stoat replied, I am delighted. So am I, said the lion, delighted but hungry. Shall we celebrate our victory with a nice lunch? Yes, indeed, replied the stoat, and by the way, may I suggest something? Let's forget about contests from now on. Agreed, said the lion, and off they went to eat. And here they are, finished with lunch, maybe getting a little distracted with something else. But these things happen. I hope you enjoyed that story. And I hope you come back and see more stories at Little Squirrel Storytime. Bye.